Hi everyone, my name is Dan Gonzalez and I'm the Corporate Manager for Virtual Design and Construction at Swinnerton. Um, Swinnerton is actually a family of companies. Um, we have William P. Young Construction, um, Swinnerton Management and Consulting, uh, Swinnerton Builders in a number of offices, Swinnerton Property Services, Lida Swinnerton, which is our Texas office, and HMH, which is our um, Sacramento office. Um, we're located um, primarily on the West Coast, but we also have offices in Honolulu, Denver, uh, San Antonio, and Houston. Uh, um, Swinerton Builders was established in 1888. Uh, we hold California License 92. I think one of the urban legends we have is, is that our guy was actually number one in line, but he went out to get something to drink. Um, probably wasn't coffee, and when he came back, there was 91 people ahead of him. But uh, we've been around for a long time. We're a 100% employee-owned and operated company. We're a leader in safety. We put in place approximately $2 billion dollars uh, worth of work per year, and we're the fifth ranked green builder in the nation, which we're very proud of given the fact that we're primarily a West Coast company. So um, we, um, we take green very seriously. Um, <clears throat> we had a corporate initiative um, at, in the beginning of 2007. Uh, at that time, I was brought on board, and our purpose of the corporate initiative was to become a leader in virtual design and construction. Um, since that time period, we've been doing approximately 50 projects uh, per year, um, VDC projects. So to date, we've done uh, approximately 105 modeling projects. And a metric that I like to uh, point out, because I think it's really important, is of those 105 projects, 44 of them are currently being used by our operations team. So we've been really making an effort to make virtual construction not just a marketing uh, or pre-construction service, but really uh, trying to get it into the uh, trailer where it really uh, makes a difference. Uh, virtually, we've built about 28 million square feet in the past two years, and the construction value of those 105 projects uh, represents about $6.5 billion. Um, in terms of our team itself, we've trained about uh, 48, I think we're close to 50 people now in seven of our divisions to use uh, Vico Constructor and the Estimator Suite. Um, we also have uh, a number of people using Revit. Um, we uh, have about 45 people uh, in five divisions that receive training for uh, MEP coordination using the Navis uh, products. Um, and I, I think I want to stress that our, our real goal here is not really to become modelers, but to become model managers. I think with IPD uh, beginning to take root that um, as a builder, it's going to be important for us to manage um, the design teams as they build models so that they're uh, useful to us and we don't have to uh, redo them. Dan, can I just interrupt for one second? Can sure. Just to speak up. To question. speak up? Yeah, that would be perfect. Thank you. Okay, I apologize. Well, uh, that, that really sort of completes mine. I think the important thing here is for us to really sort of see what the projects are. So um, I think if we can turn things over, if there's no questions, to Ross Marshall. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, as Dan stated, my name is Ross Marshall, and I am the VDC engineer on the Ritz-Carlton at North Star. Uh, just quick background on myself. I have basically four years construction experience, and uh, two of which is being the VDC engineer up here at the Ritz-Carlton, and you'll, you'll kind of see what that entails as I uh, present. <clears throat> Just some specific job info for the Ritz. It's a over $200 million job after VEs and change orders shake out. Um, it's about 450,000 square, total square feet. That includes 170 luxury guest rooms, 23 residences on the third and sixth floor. Uh, three-story parking structure, ballroom, spa, and uh, three-meal kitchen. And that's basically just a little video of entering into the hotel right there that you're seeing now. Um, project goals, as far as VDC goes, was basically just MEP fire protection coordination, along with coordinating with your structural steel and architectural elements. Um, from that, we basically had to create our level of detail, how intently we wanted this project to be detailed. Basically, did we want to go down to one-inch lines for fire sprinkler, or were we just basically doing mains, or basically anything of that nature is what level detail means. <clears throat> From that percent effectiveness, basically, if you've dealt with this in any way, shape, or form before, you kind of understand that 
you can spend 90% of the time and get, you know, half the issues, whereas the last 10% is going to take, it's going to take 100% more time because those issues are just, they're just much more difficult to flush out. So for us, it was just basically get rid of 90% of the issues and 10% of the time, and the rest of the issues are just kind of, kind of fall by the wayside and get field coordinated. And and finally, basically the timeline of the process, how long was this going to actually take? And for us up here, we actually committed to about a year and a half of actually meeting and running class detection as far as things like that. Logistics, basically, we had to discuss what model types, origin points, how we were going to separate the building, which we chose to do floor by floor, 36 total areas. And this was all pre-construction before we got into any any actual construction elements, and all these things were developed into what was what was called the MEPF 3D coordination protocol document, which you see here, which is about four pages and lists all that information. And this was, you know, developed with all the subs and whatnot, so that everybody knew exactly what they needed to be giving to me to manage, basically. The players, basically, we had Vico actually generated our architectural and structural models. And we had about them do about three updates in, in monthly periods, just depending upon how many changes we got. <clears throat> the subcontractors were Southland Industries. They were our HVAC, mechanical piping, pressure piping, and plumbing subcontractor. And Rexmore was our electrical fire alarm, and Delta Fire Systems was the fire protection. So those were, those were basically the main three subcontractors that I was dealing with at all times. The QDS 3D coordinator, myself, um, the architect, which luckily we had the owner sign on to this pretty heavily, so the architect and the design engineers were also heavily involved in this, which was a nice aspect as they were able to, you know, make decisions on the spot when we needed them to change things. <clears throat> Our actual process, it, it's pretty simplistic, but basically subs would submit their models on a Thursday. I would integrate them into Navis Works and make sure everything looked all right, and then Basically, meetings were held every Friday. These meetings were held in a central location for us, which was nice because you could actually be face-to-face -face with all the design engineers from all the different subcontractors and actually project this up on a screen. And as you can see there, you have basically two subcontractors talking about a clash that they want to, you know, what resolution they're going to take to change that. There's another picture of that. And then we also projected this over, as we're doing now, go-to meetings. So if anybody wasn't there, they could, you know, listen in and make comments, even if they weren't in the actual room. <clears throat> they, as I said, at the meetings, class detection was run. Solutions were discussed on the spot, as you saw before. <clears throat> then after, you know, we had ran through an entire area of, you know, however many clashes we had, usually it was in the hundreds. <clears throat> I would generate a class report on the following Monday that would basically state all the solutions that we were going to, that we had chose at that meeting. And basically this was so we had documentation of all the changes because in a lot of cases you'll find that sometimes subcontractors, you know, you know they'll say they're going to make a change, but a lot of times it doesn't get followed through. So basically this was documentation that this change was actually going to happen. And like, and like I said, to ensure it happened. And then after that, the subs were to revise their models and Usually, typically, after a second meeting, we'd be signing off on one area of the hotel. And so basically, this process would start again. So you'd do the same process for each area. So it was about 36 times that we did this for the whole hotel. As far as what we submitted to the owner, we had a 2D composite, basically, of all the trades overlaid over top of each other. And there's not much information, actually, on this drawing itself. There's not elevations and everything like that. Um, basically, it's, it, you know, there's little to nothing that you can take off of it. It's basically just a drawing stating that we have done our due diligence and coordinated this area in 3D and, and what, where the information of tags and elevations, all that should show up, should be in the, the subcontractor shop drawings when they actually submit that at a later date. 